my both of my boys yeah um loved to play with cars they would pick up sticks and everything was a weapon to them and it wasn't for me <laughs> and it's like the craziest thing to like see it play out I'm like there i think there really is something to this like, and where should i look <laughs> Right just at me. Okay. Just at me. Just at me. Just at me. Just at me. Okay. That's such a great question. You're very like uh, conscious of like the technical aspects because I love it when people are like, Am I, "Is my head in the frame?" It's like perfect, perfect question. Okay, so hi, my name's Ty. Hi, I'm Amy Monsky. You host a camp called Camp Forty Two. Yes. You think it's very important and people should go to it? I do. Why do you think that? Well, I would love to know more about this and why you think it's significant for other people to know about it. Well, I think there are two reasons. Okay. One is that it's a summer camp. And summer camp um, is very beneficial for young kids. It's one of the first opportunities they get to be away from home. Their first chance at independence, being with other like-minded peers. It's the first time that they get to make responsibilities and choices on their own. So summer camp by itself is a, is a huge benefit. <laughs> All right, summer camp by, by itself. By itself. Just in huge, principle. In, in they principle. have Christian summer camps. Why do they have to go to your camp? Well, and that's the other reason why ours is so important. <laughs> Just two more in case we didn't hear the first three. Right. Uh. Um, so ours is important because there are no strings attached. We take kids exactly where they are, and we see their value um, in what they are as they are. We don't try to brainwash them. We don't try to change them. We don't try to tell them what to think. We try to give them tools to evaluate and try tools to help them think mm. and to be able to uh, evaluate information. And then once they arrive at the decisions that they've arrived at, we try to give them or instill in them the courage to stand by their convictions. So that these are like really great things, but I wonder, like in concrete terms, like what are some examples? Like, could you give me, can you nail down okay. something? Yeah, yeah. So, like what's of, the best example? Of one something? of our activities that yeah. we do is uh, something called Socrates Cafe. Oh my gosh, I and love Socrates. Yeah, so Socrates Cafe <laughs> is something. There's a book, uh, Socrates Cafe, and, and there are Socrates Cafes across the country. So this is not anything that's unique. So I don't know what a Socrates Cafe is. You might want to. You have the worst luck about this. So far. <laughs> I'll say at least they're informative interruptions. They are. They okay. are. Um, Socrates Cafe, so Socrates, what is that? So it's a philosophical discussion group. And uh, this is where we talk about big um, picture questions. Um, sometimes it's something as big as like the meaning of life. Sometimes yeah. it's do we have souls. Okay. It's whatever. Um, but the big thing about it is it's um, camper-led. And we have a staff member that facilitates it to kind of keep things on topic. And kids will raise their hand and they'll keep a list of names so that, you know, um, they kids don't have to keep their hands raised because a lot of times when you're in a discussion and you're ha having your hand raised, you're waiting to talk, right? Mm. You're not necessarily listening. So by having the uh, adult facilitator take care of that, then the, the kids can really concentrate on listening. So this is where they can talk about different ideas and they really get a chance to listen to each other and to, to have practice engaging in dialogue with somebody who might not believe the same way they do about a topic mm. and you know as adults in this country we're all the time meeting people that believe differently than we do and it's really important to be able to have a conversation about the merits of a topic without it getting personal mm. so this is an opportunity um, or at least be exposed to new ideas to be exposed to different ideas yeah and, and speak so, up for them. and just speak up for them and and to you know not just think oh i disagree with that but i'm not going to say anything yeah so it's a yeah. safe space for them to express their ideas and the kids are actually surprisingly respectful of each other um, Do you ever get like a very religious kid who speaks up and says, "My mom told me this. This is what I believe. I'd like to express it at this camp." We don't. Or at this moment, we haven't gotten a lot of kids with um, strong religious backgrounds. We've had a few from mixed families, to where one parent might be an atheist and another is um, a Christian. So some of them do have um, a religious background, and we do have one camper that um, she probably would identify as a Christian, but um, she has been very accepted and is very accepting of mm. the other kids, and it, it's just very uh, respectful of the way the kids do this. So to throw this out, whether you're a religious kid or not, you can benefit from at least being part of a conversational group. 
part of, of this. different ideas talking right. to each other? Right, because we talk about ideas and, okay. and, and ways to, like I said, to evaluate ideas. And we do value the scientific approach and Ooh. evidence-based approach. Okay. Um, and another thing that we do is um, we have dialogues about social issues that other camps, especially religious ones, might shy away from, like gender identity oh, okay. um, and gender expression. And so um, we have several trans campers, and we even have trans staff. Wow. We even had a camper. First year came as birth identity um, female and came out that week as gay. And I felt so honored that that person felt safe at our camp um, to be able to share that you know, with these people that they had just met that week. And the following year, um, they were registered to come to camp, again, as female. And a couple of days before camp, their mom called me and said, um, can my child come as a boy and I said yes so how long has this camp 42 actually been going on um, my South Carolina camp has been in existence since 2012 okay that's and a long that's as far as summer camp goes that is street cred merit worthy <laughs> like it's been around for a while yeah and we take it very seriously like all of our staff including me we're all volunteers but I don't like to leave with that um, because I don't want it to seem like we're just volunteers. We are youth development professionals. Sure. And there's a whole industry on summer camps. And the American Camp Association covers that in the United States. And there are conferences, national conferences, regional conferences. And we attend the national ones and the regional ones. In fact, I was just in Nashville a few weeks ago for the national mm -hmm. conference. And so, you know, we take, we take it very seriously um, and work with other camps um, to see what they're doing that's new to keep up with trends, to kind of see what other camps are doing with different issues. Some camps are exploring gender uh, neutral cabins. Um, okay. So, you know, kind of keeping on the cutting edge of, of what, you know, this can can be. Um, to where, it's, or gender inclusive, I guess I should say. I hear what you're saying. I hear uh, what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Um, um, can I throw one thing out? Sure. So I feel like I have a better idea of what Camp 42 is now. Mm -hmm. How would you improve it if you could improve it oh. moving forward? What's something that you feel like you can do to improve it? Not that it's lacking now, right. but what can you do to optimize well, what that, you're trying to get out? That's great. Of? It's always thinking, like, what's next? I, I yeah. really do try to have that mentality of what's next. Yeah. Um, I would like... Um, to improve it as a whole, I would like to have more offerings as far as locations and um, and to be able to do more fundraising to get camperships. But um, our locations, we have three, um, the South Carolina location, one in Mississippi and one in Florida. And when we have been expanding, we always look um, to make sure that somebody is within a four-hour drive of a camp. Mm -hmm. um, I wish that we could do more, mm. but um, I think we could serve more kids mm. if we had more. So that would be the one thing, and I know that's not exactly what you are asking, but that's kind of like what's next that we're working on is just expanding out. So we got the kids on the camp, they're driving there, they're at camp right now. Right. Now that they're here, what can right. we do to what, improve what this? What can we do to improve it? Uh, I would like to actually offer more in terms of, um, I know this is going to sound backwards for summer camp, but more in terms of technology. Oh, um, okay. So technology-based, we are a no-screen camp, so we don't allow phones or, or a connection to the outside and primarily it's it's not so much that it's technology but it's that we want campers to be present in the moment and not have the distraction um, or communication with outside so like don't take pictures take memories right I see. right and don't be playing on Facebook like be present and have these conversations in real Got life it. but I think moving forward because I want to stay innovative and I want to stay on the cutting edge because I think those values are important really to everybody mm. as young kids move forward mm. because you know m more and more job creation is, is based on on um, innovation and creativity. Can I ask, and, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Can I ask? Uh, this is more of a. Um, let me know if this is a fair question. Okay. Just let me know. But I found that it sounds like there's a lot of progressive attitudes being yes. taught. Because a lot of kids, maybe in a high school environment, never get a chance to be exposed I would say shared. in a safe place. I, or what is right? Tell me. Share. Out. I would say shared as opposed to taught. Shared. I like that. Shared yeah. as opposed to taught. Um, The way how I understand progressive mm -hmm. uh, uh, lessons is that they tend to be incompatible with non-progressive lessons. Like, if someone says, hey, um, you're free to express yourself however you want, you don't need to fill into these gender stereotypes that we set up arbitrarily, the other side would say, if you're a man, you do this, if you're a woman, you do this, if you're a boy, you're good at this, if you're a girl, you're good at that. Is, are both of those mindsets equally expressed 
or do they have room to be expressed at a camp 42? Um, and if they do, does one get, no, it's actually, it should be like this. Do you, does one get course correcting the other one not? Um, at camp, we go with values based on human value and human worth. So from a camp program point of view, they would not be equal. So um, we go with um, the freedom to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, we can have love to have conversations about them. But mm. as far as gender, um, we try very hard to break down any walls that um, may have been built up in society that are arbitrary about boys wear nail don't wear nail polish, girls do. And we have something called HONAB, which is House of Nails and Beautification. That's an elective where kids can paint their nails or put on makeup. <laughs> and, play. and boys, you know, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, breaking this down, what should be. And I think that sure. really comes down to what we are as, as a free thought camp is we want kids to have the ability to think through thoughts and express them how they have. Now, if campers want to have, if campers have an opinion, that's their opinion mm. and their thoughts. Um, and they're welcome to express it within an appropriate way. Say to those campers, like, I'm totally for gender expression however you want, but I am a boy and I like snails. And I like smashing things with hammers. I'm not going to smash snails, but I'm going to smash inanimate objects because I like doing that. I like breaking stuff and learning how things put together. And I like yeah. camping. Yeah. And I like doing stuff that's stereotypically considered boy stuff. But I'm totally cool. Everybody else doing whatever they want to do, too. I just want to share that perspective of, like, inside the stereotype is also cool, too. Oh, right, yeah. It's, totally, it's totally fine to be, like, like I want to be a girly girl. If, if girly girls or are a fine. boy boy. Boy boy. Is that are, how you say it? Boy boy? boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, like, to, to be a, that is totally fine, too. Like, like anywhere on that spectrum. Anywhere on the spectrum. As long as... Um, that camper or staff member treats everybody else with respect. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, we, I feel like that could be really. I feel like what we're getting, or I feel like, I feel like we have definitely the. There's an urge to to instill values of like everybody's equal. And then there are also people since everyone's different. There's also people who already fit a stereotypical mold right. without realizing like I'm actually really comfortable here. Right. I'm sorry for being who I am. I'm also expressing myself, too. It's like, you don't have to be sorry. Exactly. You're in that stereotype. You're you. Yeah. You're good. She's you. We just want people to communicate with each other right. in a healthy and, way. And to not feel like they need to. If, if my son, um, and you know, before I had kids, I thought I'd be all one way. And, you know, that, that went out the window. But my both of my boys yeah. um, loved to play with cars. They would pick up sticks, and everything was a weapon to them. And it wasn't for me. <laughs> and it's like the craziest thing to, like, see it play out. I'm like, there, I think there really is something to this. Like, these boys pick up sticks, and they're just always beating stuff up. Testosterone loves beating stuff up. It's a it's a great... Have you ever beaten stuff up? I, it's fun. With a stick? It's yeah. amazing. It oh, is. man, when you do it, and you get that hormonal rush, you're like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, great. Like, nothing... Yeah, we try to help campers see that you know, an action is not necessarily wrong or right. Like it's appropriate or inappropriate. Look at the actions or the impact that it has on other things. Sure. But um, my my boys would definitely be very much um, a stereotypical boy, and anybody like, like that or a, a girly girl, that's totally fine. Mm. Um, and and they can have their thoughts on however anybody else is or what. But to 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 judge somebody else would not be okay. Right. So that would not be okay. I think I think it's not so much. And let me know if this is fair. I think it's not so much a standard of expression. It's a standard of how do you get well with other people. Right. And it sounds like what this camp does is facilitate a space for people who get along with each other, mm -hmm. even if they're different. Because it's not whether they fit a standard or not a standard. Right. It's what should be standardized is easy facilitation of expression. Yeah. For, and it's what's different. common among us. Like, we yeah. really look out to our common humanity. And what do we share? Because there's always so much more that we share with people that we think we disagree with if we could, like, put our differences aside yeah. just a little. And that, not that differences aren't important, because sometimes they are, especially in a public sphere when it comes to rights and, and whatnot. But I think it is important to kind of look to see what we where we can connect. Okay. Cool. Katie, uh, just to summarize real quick then, Camp 42, awesome place for kids to get along with each other and express themselves in a free environment. Uh, and that also means whether they're girly girls or a boy or like more, gra whatever yeah. whatever it is on the spectrum, whatever it is on the boy spectrum, they just have a chance to express themselves and hear from other people on a level playing field. Yep. And I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. That's it. All right. <laughs>